Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I thank God, the one who saved me, and I thank particularly the leadership. The pastor is not here, he's going somewhere. Best of Mami is here. And I thank presiding elder, and then the executive, and then the church. On the occasion of my 60, 40, 30, 30. I don't know what that means. I'm, I know it, but I, I should have said, you don't know what that means. 60, 40, 30, 30. I was born on this earth 60 years ago. I was born again into the family of God 40 years ago. I married 30 years ago, and I became an elder almost 30 years ago. And I thank God for all this. It's by grace. That's the reason why I'm so happy. I should have given a message on thankfulness or gratitude, but the Lord said no. I don't know how I'm going to be obedient, but there will be some leakages of gratitude in it. Hallelujah. In fact, uh, I'm going to speak on the topic, reminiscing Calvary for maximum impact of generations. Let's all be upstanding with the greatest respect. And then, can you go with me? Reminiscing Calvary for maximum impact of generations. Hallelujah. Let's say it once again. What does it mean? Reminiscing. Uh, I think we've been talking about some of this. In fact, I'm sorry you may sit down. We shall read the Bible text. President Edda will tell you, Pastor will tell you, Mama Ochre will tell you. Those who have been standing here will tell you that. Sometimes you prepare, and then when you come here, you put everything aside. So, uh, let me read the Bible text in case I don't get a chance to elaborate. At least you know the Bible text. And indeed, I will plead with you to write them. The Lord has told me that he's going to speak to some people. So please, I'll beg you to write these verses down and listen carefully. And indeed, the thread that will run through all that I'll be saying here are they need to pass through Calvary. They need to pass through Calvary. You might be here, you know, but you, come, you came through some doors and you are here. The things that you ought to have seen, you have not seen them, but you are here. It will not make any meaningful impact on you if you did not come through the normal gate. Then, I've said they need to pass through Calvary, and some of you may have to go back and come back. The Lord is telling me that you need to go back and pass through Calvary. If you don't do that, it will not be helpful to you. Then I will also be mentioning no Calvary encounter, no Holy Spirit. And no Holy Spirit, no rebirth. And there's no rebirth, there shall never be an effective witness, and no witness, no impact. Hallelujah. When you bypass Calvary, you cannot be a witness, and therefore cannot impact your generation. You could be impacted. Hallelujah. This morning I was with my Bible class, absolute silence. When we meet in a class like this, everybody is quiet. It, I don't feel easy. One, 
we've not read two, we have not prepared two, we, are not, we don't know the person that we are talking about. We don't know the subject that we are talking about, and so I need not advertise my innocence. You better keep quiet. And that should not be said of you. And I give an example. Assuming I'm talking to my girlfriend, I know her. Oh, we can talk and talk and talk for hours. Uh, have you eaten? What did you eat? Where did you go? Did that, did that. You can talk for hours. But Jesus is more than that person. Unless you have not gone through Calvary. You don't know what he did for you. Hallelujah. And so these are the things that will run through all that I'll be saying. Can you project the first Bible verse? Luke 23, 22 to 25, 46, and then 47. I've asked you to write them down. For the third time he spoke to them. Why? What crime has this man committed? I have, that is the, I think, first, uh, uh, the pilot, the king speaking. For the third time he spoke to them, why, what crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. Yes. But with a loud shout, they insistent, insistently demanded that he be crucified. And their shout prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. Hallelujah. Then go to the, yes. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. The one they asked for and surrendered Jesus to their will. Yes. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, unto your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Is that all? The 47. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this is a righteous man. Hallelujah. This is the man we are talking about. And I, as I stand here, I have sentenced, I won't mention it, a lot of people to death. Assuming when I was about to do that, somebody came, rose up and said, my Lord, this man did not commit that offense. I did it. What will be your relationship with that person throughout your life? This is the man that we are talking about when we meet in the Bible class. We don't seem to know anything about him to, that, to the extent that we can't talk about him. We keep quiet. The next verse, Isaiah 53, 1 to 11. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty. Really? Jesus had no beauty, but because of you, he had no beauty. Jesus had no beauty. That is what the prophet said. Fairest of all the earth beside. The one man thousand, because of you, he had no beauty. Our majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Yes, he was despised, rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised. And we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. Yes. But he was pierced for our transgression. 
He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned into our own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You are sitting here comfortably. Somebody paid a price for you. Me, I know I was a sinner. I know. And so when I came and I saw this, I said, no way. I can't remember. Have you finished with the verse? No. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers, is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet, who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. Yes. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yes. Yet. It was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an, off, an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. The last one. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge my righteous servant will justify many, and I am one of them. He will bear their iniquities. That's why. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Then the next verse, Hebrews 13, 10 to 15. Hebrews 13. We have an altar from which those who minister at the tabernacle have no right to eat. The high priest carries the blood of animals into the most high, the most holy place, as a sin offering. But the bodies are burned Outside the camp. Yes. And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the disgrace he bore. For here we do not have an enduring city. Oh, it came into my, in my class. We, we, are, we are not from here. We are going somewhere. But we are looking for the city that is to come. Hallelujah. Through Jesus, therefore, let's continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. And do not forget to do good and to share with others for which such sacrifices are planned. Hallelujah. You've gone beyond it for 15. Let's the last one. Matthew 21, 1 to 4, 22, 1 to 14. Matthew 22, 1 to 14. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. And then he sent some servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come, 
to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, the few are chosen. Sister, brother, why are we here? What's the meaning of all this? Don't you have some business to attend? Don't you have money? Aren't we stupid that when I collect my 1,000 Ghana cities, they asked me to bring 100 Ghana cities here? The queries test, don't have anything to do that every test says that they come here and come here and practice and practice. Those who clean here don't have any business. What's the meaning of all this? We, are, we have some place to go. As we sit here, we are not, as I stand here, I am not a physical man only. I'm a spiritual man as well. So as you sit here, Jesus is sitting here. You can see him. Angels are walking through the alleys where you can see them. The day will come, you see them. I wish you not say, oh, I wish you have opened my eyes to see. We are telling you. Hallelujah. So we have explained, these are the Bible texts. When we say, reminis, reminis is, you know, indulging in an enjoyable recollection of past events to bring an image of an idea from the past into the mind. Into the mind. What are you reminiscing? Sometimes it's not good always to, to look at the back, but sometimes it's good to look at the back. And I look into my back often. I remember 1983 when I, saw, I was finished my O level and I was in town. I said, Gregor. And I see Pentecost people, Brian yes, in chain, Brian yes, in chain. Where is electricity? It's only generator. So you can spout that there's a, there's a bright corner somewhere. I approached out of curiosity and I saw them. Who remember 1983? The generation X and the generation Ys. They don't know. Who remembers 1983? What happened? That's where we got Rollins chain. There's no food to eat. And so when I saw these young guys and the ladies, the way they were singing, ha, I look, I just stood somewhere and watched them. What is this? At this time, in farming, people can be so happy like this. What have they seen? And then finally they said, come to Jesus. And I said, me, I have a girlfriend. When I was in school, I was not handsome, but I have the brains. So I had a lady who was, who was giving me, and he was a rich man's daughter from Takrade, Margaret Boati. He would come. <laughs> so, you know, when we stand here, we think that we have done some more. <laughs> we have done some. 
Mother God, what thing will bring me James, Milo, this, this uh, soup? It was a special soup. Uh, you know? This church. And so we knew Pentecost from afar. This church, holy, holy people. When I go there, what am I going to do? Tell them I get what thing. You know, that was the time for discotheque and movies. And then what about I'm going to do this? I have just finished from five. I have started life. What am I going to do? Then they just grab me by, grab me by, dang. I was crying. I won't go. I won't go. The sacrifice was too much. I won't go. And I didn't go. But that night I couldn't sleep. As if somebody was talking to me. Please, where is your grandmother? Where is your grandfather? Where is this man? Where is this man? After death, where will you go? Are you listening to what they are telling you? I took my Bible, and this since 1983 June, 1983 June, this is where I am now. All because of one thing. I passed through Calvary. I quite remember one during the Easter, we were watching. I think there's some Jesus film and Nanaya, my last boy. He saw them look at me. Why are they treating that, this man like that? So it's Jesus. He came to die for our sins. Nanaya wept and wept and wept and wept. I wish he's here. Wept and wept and wept and wept. Why should they do that? Sister, brother, Calvary is the foundation of your Christianity. In the olden days, the, 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 the similarity is that you don't enter the holy of the, the, the temple just like that. There is a place we call the altar. When you go there, you wash your feet, you go before you enter into the holy of all, the holy place, and then you come to the holy place. You can never be here and be happy and worship God if you have not gone through Calvary. Because that's where Jesus died. That's the reason why we are making all the sacrifice because if some, this man died because of me, then what sort of life am I supposed to live? And why did he die? What's the meaning of all these things? That somebody to die like that? Why? Couldn't God have saved him? Couldn't God have done that? He, he did it because of you. But you are not a mission partner. You are not welfare partner. You are not IT partner. You are not life impact partner. You are not intercession partner. You are not life cleaners partner. I went to, I am a marriage committee member. You are in trouble. They will come to church. When they close, boom, they go. I was asking him, are you a member? He said, yes. So which of the departments are you? <laughs> you know, I came here only three years ago. You call it only three years ago? You were in this church and you are not in any of these departments? You know, I brought my card and then he had forgotten that he has, he's talking to a lawyer and a judge. When you start talking about these things, I know where you are going. You are lying. Why should I have time for you when you don't have time for God? Why should I have time for you? And brother, brother Atefa will tell you. I, I, I compared it and I said, well, I'm sorry, I, I don't waste time for such, such people. Let the truth be told. You are here, you don't do anything. And when the last time the, I think uh, the Nana J came here. He said that we're going some, somewhere. We belong to a kingdom, but you need to lead a kingdom lifestyle. And you come here, you need to be groomed. How are you groomed? When we came, everywhere we were, evangelism we were there. I said, as a law school student, we were cleaning the tables and chairs. As at that time, we call it that lawn benches and 
that long benches. We clean, we clean the church and then we sweep and then clean. It was not cemented, dust. We put sprinkling water before. I was not a deacon. I was not an elder. But I saw that the man died for me. And so what else can I do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Then impact. Let me go to impact before I come to Calvary. Impact is the first for meeting together of two things. Forces, ideas, ideologies, and philosophies. In this world, it did not belong, be, begin with you. There are two forces, whether you like it, good or bad, God and Satan. You need to belong to one of them. But as long as you are here, I will encourage you and treat you to belong to God. The things that are coming, that's why I talk with such passion. Because when you, you get closer, like I told you, that when you have the boyfriend or girlfriend, we talk. The things that are coming, you know who And it's not the fault of any government. The Bible has said it. So you need to sit up. You need to wise up. When you go to government, you get the foundation. You get the, the, the foundation, yes. And you get everything that makes you stand. The sister who dances so much. And I learned his nana. My, my dancing mate. You don't have anything to think about. Why? It's madness. You don't have any problem in the house. Your salary is good. And everything is okay. Oh, munya on as some domuato. If I were to collect a salary like you, do you think I, I also dance? Sit down, sit down there. And wait for everything to be okay before you do. I mean, when we meet like this, praise God. Praise him. Because of the thing that he has done. Praise him. And worship him, Lord. You dance for me? Oh. I, it's, it would not be difficult for me if I restrain myself. My, my, my wife did it. Did it. Call him her stupid. But Jimmy, the town, I holy, 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 holy. Point to confirm my man, I'm going to now. Look at her now. Somebody paid a price for you. So please, you are hearing my voice this morning. I am telling you about Calvary. That is where everything starts. Please. And I told you at the beginning that you, some of you need to go back and come and pass through there. I don't know. I am very emotional. And so there are certain things I don't watch. I did have science. I could have done maybe medicine. But I hate blood. I hate to see people in pain. So, you know, when you meet accident, ah, ah, I cannot stop and watch the accident. Did you pass there? And you are still talking like this? Did you pass through Calvary? And you are still behaving like this? You have not. You have not. I don't blame you. You have not. You have not. So I am challenging you. My time is up. I am challenging you this morning. I mean, I have a lot. I will end here and challenging you. That Calvary is the foundation. That's where when you are making any sacrifice, you don't appear stupid. Why? Because somebody did it. I hope I've talked to you. I hope I've brought your mind to you. That sooner, very soon. Oh, oh, oh. He, he, he. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hallelujah. 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 Soon and very soon. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soon. 
on your feet. The message that the Lord gave me, I think I've given it. So be on your feet wherever you are. Try. Even if your waist is painful, please be on your feet. That's the beginning of all that we are doing. If you miss Calvary, you are not going to enjoy this Christian life. You won't. I say, yeah, how? Muhammad Odo. Yeah, how? Yeah, how? Because somebody paid a price for you. Please respond. Respond to this call. Respond. What are you saying? What are you saying? What are you saying, Lord? What are you saying? Make a response. Make a change. Make a change. Make a change. Make a change. Kara Sandaya. Be quiet and be silent. The Lord is here and he's here with his spirit and the angels are there hovering around, looking to hearts, looking to man those who are prepared, those who are, who are prepared to forsake, forsake. Go back and tell him that today is today. I'm sorry I found a new boyfriend. Go and tell him. That I'll find somebody who is taking me to heaven. I'm sorry. Yes, I will suffer. There will be much challenge and difficulty henceforth. But I'm sorry, I'm going to heaven. 